Firstly, thank you very much to the organizers. It's a pleasure to be participating in this conference to commemorate holography. Um, but before to start a brief announcement, next year in Argentina, in La Plata, uh, well, here people from, from our group and from King's College are organizing this, this workshop. It's going to be some week in April. Um, and it's going to be about holography and physics in ADS and DS. Uh, so I, I'm sure next uh, Zoom there's going to be a web page with more precise information. Good. So, well, as indicated in the title, I'm going to be talking about the to how to study Wilson loops in certain supersymmetric Charles Simon's matter theory using integrability. This is work done in collaboration with uh, Victor Giraldo Rivera and Martin Lagares. Um, oh, no, here. But this is a workshop to commemorate holography, so I, I, sh I would like to start remarking some, some important work uh, for the history of the development of ads -EFT and also important for what I'm going to be talking today, and, and it is BMM paper. This paper is from 2002, and it's by Berenstein, Maldacena, and Nastase. And it was the very first verification or a precision test of ads -EFT for observables that were not protected by supersymmetry. So what they did in this paper, they computed the anomalous, anomalous dimension of certain single trace operators, very long. This L measures the length of this trace. And for these uh, long single trace operators, they were able to match exactly, precisely, even the, the, the numerical coefficient, with the energy of closed strings propagated in, in a PPW background. A PPW background because, I mean, the strings in ADS5, when they have this large L means they, they have large angular momentum, and that's the effective geometry that, that, that they feel when they move with large angular momentum. So that's, that's amazing, but then you should ask, why is it possible that some computation that was meant to be perturbative, valid that we coupling, is, is matches some, some computation that is valid in principle in the opposite regime when lambda is very large. And the, the explanation for that is this VMN limit or VMN scaling. So these VMN operators, actually, they, don't, they do not depend on the cap, on just in the tough coupling and the, this parameter else separately, but they, they depend on this effective uh, parameter, which is lambda over L square. So as long as this uh, parameter is small, you can trust this computation, uh, this perturbative computation. So you see, you, you can now now that L is large, you can relax L being small, and then you, that's the, the way in which you access the, the strong coupling. So another thing that was very important or, or had a great impact in, on our field of this paper, that this paper was already uh, signal, signal putting, uh, indicating to us that in order to make precision tests, we need to look at anomalous dimensions of operators. So. This takes me to, okay, closer to my, to my talk. So I'm going to be, this is going to be telling you today is how to compute the anomalous dimension of certain Wilson loops in these supersymmetric George Simons theories when these Wilson loops have, have a cusp. When, when, you, when you introduce a sudden change in the direction of a Wilson loop, they develop these uh, logarithmic divergences. And you can interpret this as an anomalous dimension. Sorry. And of course, you can compute this, this anomalous, this cusp anomalous dimension perturbatively in the field theory. And it was, that was done by this Italian group many years ago. So what I'm going to be telling you today is how to compute the same quantity, but not by perturbative computation, but just uh, proposing a thermodynamic better answer that, that you can do it because of the, the, these problems turns out to be integrable. So this TBA system is going to compute, in principle, this cusp anomalous dimension exactly as a function of the top coupling. And OK, we, 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 we at least were able to reproduce, to test our proposal, reproducing this one loop order of the cusp anomalous dimension. So, uh, let us motivate a little bit this, this, this problem. Well, 
the, the, the cast parameter dimension in, in, in any gauge theory is important because you can you can extract out of it important data of the of the gauge theory. So you can compute the quark anti quark potential. But in particular, today I'm going to be interested in this uh, limit when you take this the the the, um, the cast angle to be very small. You can relate the Casper normalized dimension with this coefficient, which is called the Brestralum function, simply because it, it is the, the, the coefficient that appears in front of the, if you, if you wish, the Larmor's formula that computes the energy radiated by an accelerated charge. So, but in particular, I am interested in, in, this, in this quantity, the Brestralum function, it was mentioned today. In some theories, and in ABJM is one example of that, it can be computed exactly, exactly as a function of the of the top cap in this, in this theory, right? This is a, a, a bit implicit an expression, but you can you can you can compute exactly the dependence on the of this Prestalum function as a function of the coupling. So, okay, and you might ask, why would you be interested in analyzing something that's already been computed exactly? Well. Because if, if we manage to do, to reproduce to, to, to compute again this Brestralum function, but now using integrability, we would be able to derive some function, which is called the interpolating function. That, as, as we will review for you, it, it enters in all integrability computations in ABJM theory. ABJM theory. You can bootstrap the, the S matrix and everything, but everything is going to depend. Any any computation you obtain using integrability is going to depend on this function that, in principle, you don't know. So, having I mean this prescription I, I'm trying to propose is is a way of deriving uh, what what it is the the this uh, uh, interpolating function. So, more motivation. Well, this is right to emphasize that something that holography uh, bring to us that this is the, this stark evidence that integrability is not just important in two dimensions you can be it can be useful in higher in, 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 in for field theories in in dimensions space type dimensions higher than two while the the, the computation of the spectrum of single trace operator both in n, in n equal four super young mills and this abjm theory is an example of that but it was also useful to compute this quark anti quark potential, we studied these Wilson loops in n equal four super young mill theory. So at that time, after uh, those articles, it, people thought, okay, this should be a straightforward to extend these ideas to compute the, to study Wilson loops in ABJM using integrability. But, I mean, as we'll see, the, 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 the work, the, the result I'm presenting today is a paper of this year, so it took a while to, to, to do this generalization. So let me discuss or let me review some of the basic properties of integrability when you apply it to the case of ABJM theory. So as I said, it's a supersymmetric charge Simon theory. And let me just remark the, the very basic things. It, the gauge group is to UN times UN. And the matter contact is somehow encoded in this quiver diagram. So you have. Uh, by fundamentals of these two groups, this is the this is another is like another one of the param paradigmatic examples of ADCFT because the dual description, the holographic dual description of this uh, this charge Simon theory is uh, type two A string theory in this ADS four and CP three program, at least in the limit in which K and, and R is large. Um, Okay, say now you, you, you want to study single trace operators uh, in this theory. Now, since, since the matter is in the, in the right fundamental of these two groups, in order to make a single trace gauge invariant operators, you need to take a product of fields that alternates one type with the other. So this is what I'm depicting here with different colors. So you, you have to alternate. These, those are scalar fields, C, and you have to take one of these uh, sort with this C bar uh, after it in order to, to, to make something gauge invariant. In particular, the, the, this example I am presenting here, this is a chiral operator. This is VPS, and it is protected. So in this case, there is no anomalous dimension. The, 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 this is kind of boring. 
But if you want to consider more general single trace operators, say that you start to replace one of those C1 fields by some C3 or C4, some other fields, or fermions or whatever, or even you can replace the, the red fields, then um, they, they, they are going to start to mix under quantum for, because of quantum corrections, and then you need to diagonalize uh, these, these single trace operators in order to get operators that are, that are angle states of the dilatation operator. For instance, well, this is like a, here I am already using this spin chain description. So for whenever I have this uh, C1, I, I think of a spin up, a blue one, or this C bar 2, I have a red spin up. So this is like a ferromagnetic uh, state in the spin chain, in this alternating spin chain. But I can say whenever I replace the C1 by uh, C3, it's like flipping. I, I want to depict it like flipping of one of the, the blue spins, or I can replace one of the C bar 2, and that would correspond to flipping of one of the red spins. So because we have, we have these two types of matters in the, in the single trace, we have these two types of excitations. You, you can flip uh, one, one blue uh, state, uh, or, 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 one, or a red one. So I will be calling today type A, excitation, or type B. And of course, you, you can just consider combinations of this with the position of this impurity or this spin flipped in, the, in different positions on, the, on your chain and combining them with, a, with this or providing them with a the momentum. And this is what it is called a momentum, a magnum. So it's a spin wave of this uh, uh, impurity in the, in, the, in, the, in the ferromagnetic vacuum. So, OK, well, then when you want to, when you have to look for the eigenstate of the dilatation operator, you have to diagonalize an operator that essentially plays the role as the Hamiltonian of a spin chain. And it turns out that this Hamiltonian that diagonalizes uh, the basis of these uh, single trace operators is an integrable Hamiltonian. And the energy of this Hamiltonian is precisely computing the scale dimension or the anomalous dimension of these single trace operators. OK, I, I already mentioned this. This is an integrable. Um, Hamiltonian, and then okay, you can use uh, the symmetries of the problem to bootstrap. Okay, now suppose that you have more than one impurity, then these this, uh, magnum excitations are going to propagate in this, uh, in this reference state, and they can scatter, and you can have three more or any number of impurities. Um, but if, as, as the problem is integrable, you, you will be able to, to factorize all the scattering factors in terms of this 2 to 2 bulk scattering matrix. And this is probably for those who were in the, in the school, closely related to what uh, Kostya Sarembo was talking about. Um, so in this case, so let, let me emphasize, probably he was talking about n equal for, n equal for super young mills, but the, this, this, all these ideas of bootstrapping the S matrix are quite similar in N equal 4 and, and, and ABJM. So let me just emphasize the differences. So in both cases, we have an SU2 as last two underlying symmetry that is going to constrain both what, what it is the, the matrix form of the, this scattering matrix and also the dispersion relation, so the energy that is associated to every magnet of momentum P. In ABJM, as we have these two types of, of matter, we have this uh, type A and type B excitation. So we, we have to consider different possible S matrices. You can consider the S matrix of two magnums of the same type or the different type. But in both, case, in both cases, are, they are constrained by the same underlying symmetry. So at the end of the day, the matrix part is the same in both. They can only differ up to uh, this overall factor, which is what we call in the dressing factor. But since it's the same S matrix constrained by the SU2 slash 2 symmetry that we, we had in N equal 4 supernatural and Mills, we already knew that it was consistent with Jan Baxter equation, which is an indication that you can factorize the scattering of 3 into 2. So this is an indication of, of, of integrability. So, and then, but of course, in order to, to work this exactly, you need also to pin down what it is, this, what are those dressing factors. 
And then you can use crossing symmetry to further constrain these scattering, these dressing factors. And there is a, this, this proposal that the, 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 the dressing factors in ABJM are up to some overall rational expressions. The, the square root of the dressing factors you, you got in for the bulk case matrix in n equal 4 to Brian Gibbs. So, as, as already mentioned, the, this underlying symmetry all also constrained where it is the dispersion relation. So where it is the energy of, of every magnet excitation is propagated in this, in this uh, reference state. And the expression of this uh, dispersion relation is the following. And it's the square root of 1 plus some arbitrary function times this, this sine square of p over 2. But let me emphasize that this uh, this function of this, this function of the coupling cannot be bootstrapped with this symmetry argument, right? It's, it's not fixed by symmetry, and since it's, it's, it's given the the energy of the of the magnet, it's going to enter in any result you obtain using integrability. It's going to depend eventually on this h function. So if you want to make something useful out of integrability, you need to know what is this h function. So how it was in n equal four super young mills? In, in, well, in n equal four super young mills, somehow there was a windfall of n equal four super young mills. This this function was simply just lambda or lambda over sixteen pi squared, if you wish. Um, and the, a way of, of precisely proving this, this 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 identity is what I am proposing to do for, for ABJN. So this there is this function, this Brestalum function that, that can be computed exactly using localization results. And you can compute the same quantity using integrability. The matching of the two expressions uh, requires that this H function in the case of n equal four to is, is exactly this, this simple lambda uh, dependence. And as I said, this is something, if in principle, unexpected. And it was very important for, for the development of our field, if you wish, because had it been different for n equal 4 super young mill, there would be no VMN limit. So VMN, this, this, this VMN extrapolation was only possible because this H function was the same as weak coupling and strong coupling just lambda. So. This is in connection to, to, to my, my first slide. But OK, today I, I'm, I'm interested in describing this H function or, or, or starting to a, a procedure just to, to, to see if it is possible to derive this H function in ABJM. In ABJM, this function is a non-trivial function of the coupling. And we coupling, by doing perturbative computations, we know that it's, it goes to like lambda square, the H square. So if you wish lambda, H goes like goes to like lambda, and h goes like the square root of 2 lambda at strong coupling. A disclaimer, there is a, a, a broadly accepted proposal for what this uh, h function is. And it's a proposal by Gromov and Sisov. And, and the idea is the following. They, they were computing something which is called the, the slope function, which is the, it characterizes the, the anomaly of dimension of like one of those chiral uh, single trace operator with some derivatives in the limit in which the numbers of derivatives take into zero. When you compute using integrability, this is a slow function in ABJM, you, you, you express the result in terms of some integrals where the integrands are very similar to some integrands that appear in the localization computation of some circular Wilson loop, if you wish. But there is no obvious reason why these two quantities have to be the same. But I say, OK, if, recall, this, this kappa of lambda was some a spectral uh, function of the coupling that, uh, that was used to, to, to express this prestralum uh, function, for instance. If this kappa, this function of the coupling, was identified with this sign of h, essentially, this integrands uh, would, would be equal. So and that, that's, that's how they, they make this proposal. But in principle, there is, there is not a, a, a strict derivation because they are comparing things that uh, you, you are not uh, sure why they should uh, agree. So what, what I'm trying to propose is that, OK, if we can do, if we can 
the study this restraining function, we will compute in exactly the same observable using uh, localization results and interoperability. And then the, the, the that would be, uh, if you wish, a more rigorous derivation of this H function. So let me uh, sketch the idea of how, how is it possible to use interoperability to compute the cast panomolar dimension, and uh, as I said, if you take then the cast panomolar dimension, the small angle limit is going to give you the prestralum. This is a rather indirect method, it, and it goes as follows. First, you can consider, you, you, you start with an, an straight Wilson line, and you can distort it by inserting some operator at some point along the, the line. If you wish, it's like taking this single trace and removing the trace. It's like you open the trace and inserting this in the Wilson loop. It's like now, instead of having periodic boundary conditions for your spin chains, you are, you are inserting this in a Wilson loop. The Wilson loop is playing the role of open boundary conditions for this insertion in this, in this, in this operator, in this Wilson loop. OK, then we, you can use the, the symmetries of the problem to bootstrap, well, because now the, the impurities in this vacuum reference states can not only scatter among themselves, but they can also uh, be reflected by these boundaries set by the Wilson loop. But then you can use the, 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 the residual symmetry to bootstrap what, what it is the, the S matrix, you can the, the reflection matrix. Then you rotate one of the boundaries. This is like introducing a cusp. But then you would like to compute the, this, uh, all these results in interoperability are asymptotic. So when, whenever you take L, the length of this insertion, finite, it receives finite size corrections which can be computed by a thermodynamic variance. Eventually, once you have a, a, the finite size correction for finite L, you take L to zero, it's like inserting nothing, and then what you get is just the Wilson loop with the cusp, and the, the energy of the vacuum state in this limit should, should give us the, the cusp anomalous dimension. And this, exactly this exercise was done in N equal four super young mills, successfully. So that's uh, why we hope it's going to work also for FGM. So, well, let, let me say a few things about the Wilson loop in, in, in FGM theory. So now we, we are not talking about the, the ordinary Wilson loop, which is just exponential of the, the, the contour, of some contour integral of the gauge field. It's some, this the, the, if you wish, like you have this generalized connection that on, not only involves the gauge fields, but also the matter fields. You have this quadratic product of the scalars, you also have the fermions. So this is uh, the half VPS Wilson loop in AVJM. Let me emphasize something which is different from the case of N equal 4 super young mills. The Wilson loop is supersymmetric, so it's, it's invariant under the this half of the supersymmetry transformation, but this that curly W, which is the operator before taking the trace is not invariant, it's covariant. And this is going to be important for us. But then you can ask, OK, what are the symmetries in common between the Wilson loop, which are those, and this chiral reference state? And they, there is this SU1 slash 2 symmetry in common. And you can use this symmetry to constrain what it is, the, the reflection. Now you can, you're going to flip some of these spins in the vacuum. There are going to be impurities with propagating with some momentum that it can be reflected off the boundaries. And then you can compute exactly what the reflection matrix is. And then using this symmetry, you see that the reflection matrix is up to an overall, fa uh, up to an overall factor, which is the boundary dressing factor, is this simple diagonal reflection matrix. So that was good because this, you, you can, there is an analogous uh, constraint from the analogous to the Jan Baxter equation, which is the boundary Jan Baxter, which uh, is a signal of uh, uh, the integrability of the problem. So all this we knew in the early days of this chart, right, when we started to think of, of this problem. So so far, so good. But at, the, at, the, at this point, uh, this project, in my case, and for, for other people that I knew they were thinking of the same problem, stalled for years. Why was the reason for that? Well, I think that the, the, in my case, at least, uh, what I was lacking was the, the, the correct picture for the, for the weak coupling description of this spin chain, which is necessary to, to, to correctly identify the distressing factors. Let me try, try to describe this with some detail. So 
as I said, we, 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 we have the expression of the reflection matrix up to an overall factor. We need some, some conditions to constrain this, this expression. And this is, can, be, can be obtained by this boundary crossing condition, which is like, like the reflection of some singlet state. And then you obtain this boundary crossing condition. So now th this cannot be anything. They have to be subject to this uh, equation. This x plus or minus are some some way of parameterizing the momentum of the of the magnet in this uh, holography iterability business. So it's pretty much similar to the the boundary crossing condition we have for the Wilson loop in the case of n equal force to Brignac mill. So we, we at this point we we make an answer. So there are going to be some unknown functions, a small r, and here this is essentially the square root of what, what it was the dressing factor in n equal force to Brignac mill. Having the square root, it, it, it was important because now you, you, don't, you, you want to, to solve this crossing equation, but you also want this dressing factor to be consistent with explicit computation. You can do a strong coupling and a weak coupling. And by taking the square root, you immediately satisfy the, the, the computation or is consistent with the, what, what the, the, the string theory computations is telling you about these, these dressing factors. These dressing factors can be computed by a, a scattering of magnons of, 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 if you wish, time solitons in certain sine gordon models. And this is completely captured by the, by the computations in ADS2 times S2. And this is identical to the case in, in n equal force to Brignac mill. So the, the strong coupling is just by, by taking the square root. Is we, are, we are already capturing the, the, the good strong coupling behavior. So, but okay. After this proposal, we, we still need to solve this for this small uh, unknown dressing factors. This small R. There, there are many ways of solving this. You can say now uh, both of them are equal, equal to the square root of this, or you can just one is R, R A is equal to one, R B is equal to this. But in addition to solve this equation, you also need to be consistent with a weak coupling. Uh, computation of these dressing factors. And this is what I, I said. I, I, we, we, in principle, I had the, the wrong picture to, to, to do this uh, correct choosing of the solution of the crossing equation. Let me, let me recall what I mentioned, that this Wilson loop, before taking the trace, is not invariant, but, but covariant. So if you, take, if you make a supersymmetry transformation, it transforms like the exponential of uh, some, some expression and, and the, the exponential, the, the, the inverse of, uh, up to the right. So it's not enough to consider an insertion which is invariant and then the same supersymmetries of the Wilson loop because for the whole thing to be supersymmetric, you also need that the, 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 the operator you are inserting commutes with this lambda. So, and in the case, so the, the, the most naive uh, proposal for this uh, insertion as their vacuum state for, the, for, the, for our open spin chain, we just have to take this C1, C2 to some powers in the diagonals, and C bar, C2 bar, C1 uh, in, the, in the other diagonal block. But the problem with this proposal is this is not VPS. So if this is not VPS, this cannot be described, the, 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 the reflection matrix we, we, we constrain with this super, super group SU1, SLS2. So, okay, well, we, we started to think, okay, there must, there must be some insertion carrying large angular momentum, la large units of this, the angular momentum as this operator, but being supersymmetric. So we need to, to, to satisfy this condition, not only the variation, but the combination of the variation with the commutator has to be zero. So, and then we encounter this triangular. It's, it's really awful if you, if you, at the beginning, you don't like it at all. And then you take many powers of this, and this is satisfies the, this condition. This is supersymmetric. This carries large amount of angular momentum. But it, this, this in, doesn't look like a reference state, because now you expand this. It's like having, you have this fermionic field here. It's going to be a sum of many terms with a fermion in, in different positions. It's more like a, an, a, fermion, a, mag, a fermionic magnon state with zero momentum. But then we realize that this is even not chiral. This, is, this can be the, the descendant of this, sorry this even simpler uh, vacuum state. Now, uh, this, is, this is 
is, is supersymmetric and it looks like a, like a reference state. So this off-diagonal insertion in the Wilson loop is, is going to play the role for our reference state in which we are gonna now propagate. Now you can replace one of the C1s by some other fields or the C2s and then uh, propagate these impurities and uh, scattering them, reflecting them, and so on and so forth. We studied that problem perturbatively, and what we encounter it was a very different behavior for the recall that we had two types of impurities, the type A and, and type B, depending whether we replace uh, a blue field or a, or a red field in this uh, insertion. When, when considered the type A or the type B magnet in this case, which was this one of the red impurities, now instead of C2, we have a C3 bar. But you see, this is, by these colors, I'm trying to indicate the range of the interaction. So this is like the bulk. For, for the bulk uh, Hamiltonian, we, we have the same as probably uh, Kostya presented in his, in his lecture. So this is 1 minus the permutation, which is the usual spin chain for a Heisenberg spin chain, uh, the, the Hamiltonian for a Heisenberg spin chain. And in this case, it's like uh, it's order, this lambda square is it, indicating that this is the distance between the, the red field C3 with this other one. So it, it, the, the interaction has to be two loops. Then you can, okay, you can make an answer for the reflection, for, the, for an eigenstate with, with its superposition. And then you can fix what, what it is the, the reflection factor that we're coupling. But when you consider the type A magnons, which is an impurity in the, in the blue fields. So let's say that now replace C1 by C3. When the C3 goes to the boundary, okay, to the bulk, the, the, the bulk the Hamiltonian is exactly the same with this lambda square in front, but you have the possibility of this impurity to interact with the boundary at just one loop. So we have a, a, a boundary term, which is an order lower than the, the bulk Hamiltonian. So, and this was at the beginning was also unexpected for us, but then you have an, an state we, whose energy is order lambda, which is like the, 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 the impurity is stuck at the boundary. So it's, at, well, we, we could also fix uh, what it is the, the reflection um, factor for these impurities, for these other type of impurities, but we also have to understand the existence of this uh, other states bound to the boundary. So with, with all this intuition, we were able to make this, this proposal. We were to propose uh, what, what are those uh, remaining functions of the, of the dressing factors. And they was consistent with crossing symmetry, with a strong coupling results, weak coupling results, everything. And moreover, you see that this, a, this, this proposal, this, this, this factor for the A type of A type magnets of type A have this additional factor, and this additional factor has a pole as x minus goes to i, and when you compute the energy for this value of the spectral parameter, it gives you precisely the energy for the, for the, 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 the magnet uh, bound to the boundary. So essentially, was, I think that was the most important part of our recent work was just the, 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 the correct picture in the weak coupling limit allowed us to, to pin down what it is the what it were the, the reflection, um, the, the, the boundary dressing factor. So we, we, we have a solution that uh, satisfies all the requirements. So I think I have five, six, ten minutes, or oh, more or less. Okay. So in the remainder, I mean, now the, 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 the main idea is now, now that you, you, we know exactly the bulk matrix and the reflection matrix, we can use this information to, to solve exactly for the spectrum of excitations on the, of these insertions in the Wilson loop. Um, and we, so if you wish, going back to my, my method, we already ticked all these possibilities. Now we, we have to, to develop a method to, to incorporate finite size effects for the spectrum of uh, the anomalous dimensions of this Wilson loop with these insertions, these open spin chains, if you wish. And eventually, compute the vacuum energy and take the limit in which the size of the insertion goes to zero. This is going to give us the, the anomalous dimension. So in order to do that, I need to uh, sketch the idea of what it is the thermodynamic bed answer with, with open boundaries, right? So 
if you wish to, I mean, some, some quantity that, in, that encodes the, the spectrum of a theory is the partition function. So if you take the partition function of, of your theory that, that has uh, this uh, size L, and then you uh, put it at some temperature, 1 over beta, so this is what is computing the, the partition function. Now, when, when you do this in, in, the, in, the path, uh, in the path integral formulation of your theory, if you wish, you, it's, it's equivalent to think of this in this picture or, or this other picture in which now it's like a double weak rotation in which now you, you, you interpret like your, your system being um, a periodic chain of size beta and evolving a time L from some boundary state to some final boundary state. This, those, those boundary states are pretty much the same as, uh, for my case, the, the boundary state as, as uh, Kostya was telling us today. So by this, uh, well, you, you pass from the physical picture to the mirror picture by this uh, exchanging of momentum with i times the energy and the energy the with i times the momentum of the mirror theory. So, but in general, well, this is some, something already that, what it is, these boundary states, this was already mentioned, these this boundary states uh, can be uh, expanded in, in, in this basis of magnons uh, uh, with positive and negative momenta, and then the, the coefficient of this expansion is precisely the reflection matrix evaluated at some analytic continuation of the of the of the argument, so still computing this partition function would be in general very difficult. But we don't need to do it in the general case. We, for us, it's going to be enough just to study the partition function in this beta going to infinity limit. Why? In the physical picture, is 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 it immediate what it happens? So we, if you take beta going to infinity, the the, the this trace is going to be dominated just by the energy of the ground state, which is what we would like to compute. And then, when you go to the to the mirror picture, since now beta is going to infinity, this the, the better answer description of this theory with periodic boundary conditions is exact because now beta is infinity. The, now you, you don't need to, to worry about finite size effects in the in the mirror theory. So you can use the better answer to compute the, the partition function in in the, in the mirror theory. Still, this is not uh, straightforward. You need to to do some uh, thermodynamic limit and introduce densities. But you, you can do that. Let me just uh, sketch what would it be the result in a, in a general case. The, the, the energy of the ground state is going to be given by this sum of, it, it, you have as many y functions as, as many particles you have in your theory. And then you have to integrate over the mirror momentum, uh, the, the momentum of the, the mirror particles of this quantity. And this y function, they has to satisfy some integral equations, which is this one here. Here, the recall this k, sorry for the, con the notation, it's a bit confusing. This k is this somehow related to the reflection matrix of the, mirror of the physical theory. And this other case is like a kernel, which depends on the, the bulk matrix of the theory. But this, I, I draw the, the, them, those terms in green because this is the, the, the asymptotic solution. So if you call this the exponential, well, this, you, you, you take the, the exponential of this. This green part is giving you the asymptotic leading uh, con solution of this equation when L is very large. And then you can subtract. And once, let, let me point the following. Let me remark the following. When you subtract the, the, these asymptotic solutions and you write these TBA equations, they look exactly the same if you are in the periodic case, open case. So the, the TBA equations, when you write the TBA equations, the subtract after subtracting the, the asymptotic solutions, they are they look the same in, in, in all the cases. So this is gonna what, what I we are what I am gonna be using. So I, I'll wait. Okay, now you can play this with all the details of the specific case of ABJM, but essentially I'm gonna be assuming that the TBA equations for the ABJM Wilson loop is the same as the periodic. Uh, ABJM case after you subtract by with the asymptotic solution. So that would be, it's an awful expression. It's very complicated because there are a lot of y functions. But then the, the thing is that 
th those asymptotic solutions, you can compute them by some looser computation. Essentially, the, the asymptotic solution is physically interpreted as the exchange, sorry, maybe I have a picture here, here, as the exchange of virtual particles be between one boundary and, and the other. So, um, yes, so while well, you have this unknown function that you can fix with this looser interpretation, which, so these two things have to match when you, you, when you use here the reflection matrix. So, at that point, it was important to know exactly the reflection matrices. That if you don't have the correct dressing factors, you, this, this expression is going to be uh, incorrect. Anyway, so if, if we, after fixing this bar phi and getting the, the correct, the complete asymptotic solutions, this is what we have for the y functions. And this has to be fed in this expression. Now you have to sum over all possible particles, integrate over all possible values of the momenta of this quantity, the logarithm of 1 plus these asymptotic solutions. And, well, we, 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 you can compute that. And then the, the, there are two, two very different situations, depending whether the, when q goes to 0, these y functions are regular or they have a double pole. And the interpretation is, when they are regular, what this is computing is the, the exchange of two mirror particles with momentum p, or q and minus q. But whenever there is this double pole, this is interpreted as the exchange of a single uh, mirror particle with zero momenta. And the reason for that is because when you try to, when you go to compute this, the integral of the logarithm of one plus something with the double pole here, this integral is essentially giving you the square root of whatever is in, uh, as a coefficient in, in, uh, on, on top of this, this double pole. So among all these y functions, the, to the leading order, the, the contribution is going to come for those with this double pole, which is represented by the exchange of this single magnum, virtual magnum. So, okay, those are, this is already just very technical, but then when, when we insert, uh, when we consider this uh, expression for this kind of residue of our asymptotic solutions for the y functions, and then we, we, we have to sum over all of them, we, we, these, these coefficients are given in terms of the Jacobi polynomials. It's a complicated expression. And recall, this is computing the, 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 the energy of the anomalous dimension of a Wilson loop with a cusp, but, but some insertion of length L at the tip of the cusp. Eventually, we would like to, to compute the, the anomalous dimension in the case in which the number of fields we are inserting at the tip of the cusp is vanishing. So we have to set 2L plus 1 equal to 0, and then the sum reduces to this sum of Jacobi polynomials that can be done. And this is nicely this uh, exact expression we have with the perturbative weak coupling computation. So this is just indicating that the, the or it's a verification that our proposed TBA system computes correctly the cusp anomalous dimension in AVJM. So this is pretty much what I wanted to tell you. So let me just conclude. Let me emphasize once again that this is something we, that integrability can be useful in space-time dimension. In space-time, whose dimension is larger than two, so so the, this computation is another example of that, if you wish. Um, well, uh, we, I have presented a thermodynamic variance system that computes the cusp anomalous dimension of ABJM. And we were able to, to, to show that it, it correctly reproduced the perturbative one-loop one, one result. But in principle, this is the most important thing, the TBA system, if we solve it beyond this asymptotic solution, we iterate this, this integral system to, to, to beyond this asymptotic solution, it, it's going to generate higher order. So in principle, it provides the all-loop result. So if you wish, since the cusp, the, gap, the cusp of the dimension is related to the Bertrand function, this is the first step towards a direct derivation of this interpolating function that appears in all integrability-based computations in ABJM. So in order to, to, to complete this, this derivation, we, we would need to, to, to solve exactly the, these boundary TBA equations in the limit in which the, the, the cusp angle is, is small. Thank you. This is... Well.
Questions? Sorry, say it again. Are there quantum spectral curve equations one could use instead of one? Yes, yeah, I mean, the, the quantum spectral curve for the ABJM case is being derived. And in principle, I, I think that the same logic should, should, should appear somehow after subtracting the asymptotic uh, behavior, they should be the same. So, yeah, may, maybe this is the way because the, the quantum spectral curve seems to be a more efficient way to to proxy sometimes than, than, than TBA. So yes, this is probably one of the must things to do, just to, 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 to consider the same problem with the quantum spectral curve formulation. Other questions? I have one. Uh, so as I mentioned in my, in my talk, uh, when you compute these SUSY localization answers, there's a natural shift of lambda by this minus 1 over 24. Yes. Do you see any indication of this uh, shift in these type of calculations for this h of lambda function? Well, um, that, that would require to, to, to solve. So I, I was considering the TBA equation in the weak coupling limit. Right. But uh, in principle, you, you should. Um, you should do it at large yeah, so you to try to think to, to, to see if it is possible to analyze the, the opposite regime. Um, yeah. Maybe a general question about ABGM integrability. Is ABJ theory integrable with two coupling constants? It's a good question. Um, at some point, there was some doubts because ABJ breaks parity of the. I mean, that the, they could be parity break in terms in the in the spin chain, but there were some computations at least for periodic boundary conditions that that. Uh, I think for loops, for loops or, or something like that, and integrability persisted. So, in principle, but I think it's an open question that uh, that's why we, we, we stayed in the ABJM case. Uh, but, but then, um, how would that be reflected in the function H? It will depend on two couplings, or yeah, it depends on two couplings. But th there is, I think, there is also a proposal for the function H in the in that case as well. Um, but it's a more complicated expression, yes. Okay. Other questions? If not, thank you very much and let's go. Thank you. Forward.